Hi, this is the second video on broken symmetry. In this video, we're going to see how to derive the relations between the broken symmetry minus triplet energy difference and how that is related to the actual singlet triplet gap. In a previous video, we saw that uh, triplet wave functions with s equal 1 have three projections, plus 1, 0, and minus 1 of ms, and singlet uh, wave functions have only one projection. If we consider the Heisenberg Dirac Van Fleck Hamiltonian that is written as minus an exchange coupling constant j times the spin operator acting on spin 1 and spin 2, we can get to an expression where the exchange coupling parameter is related to the singlet energy minus the triplet energy. But how do we calculate that within DFT? which is a single determinantal electronic structure method. So we need to use broken symmetry solutions because those are single determinant wave functions. In the previous video, we saw that the ms equal 1 component of the triplet energy could be written as a single Slater determinant with spin alpha on electron 1 and spin alpha on electron 2. And there were two broken symmetry solutions which have ms equals 0, but they don't belong neither to the singlet or the triplet. They have one electron with spin alpha and the other electron with spin beta. For the purposes of the following derivation, we are going to change the sign of the broken symmetry 2 solution. You can see here that we have flipped basically the two terms. We have flipped the sign of the total wave function. That is to get into the same... Um, notation as that used by Mario and collaborators in the reference below. We are just changing the sign of one of the uh, broken symmetry solutions. We are not altering the physics of the problem. Using this, we can define the singlet to be a plus linear combination of the broken symmetry 1 and broken symmetry 2 solutions. And this is divided by a normalization factor. The triplet solution, instead the ms equals 0 component of the triplet, can be obtained as a subtracting linear combination of, of the broken symmetry 1 and broken symmetry 2 solutions. Again, divided by a normalization factor. If we calculate the energy of the singlet, we have to apply the Hamiltonian operator of the system between these two singlet wave functions. And because each singlet is defined as a plus linear combination of BS1 and BS2, we can carry out all these terms, which are not that hard, and we start by taking out this normalization factor. We multiply out the square roots. So we get 1 over 2 times 1 plus the overlap between the broken symmetry 1 and broken symmetry 2 wave functions. And then we have to carry out all the cross uh, Hamiltonian integrals. So basically we carry this out and we get the expectation value of the Hamiltonian applied to the broken symmetry 1 state, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian applied to broken symmetry 2 state, and we get this cross term multiplied by 2, that is the basically the matrix element of the Hamiltonian between the broken symmetry 1 and broken symmetry 2 wave functions. The expectation values of the Hamiltonian applied to BS1 or BS2 have the same energy, because the uh, Hamiltonian that we are considering is only an electronic Hamiltonian doesn't explicitly depend on spin. We get twice what we will call the energy of the broken symmetry calculation. This is a quantity that we can calculate by doing DFT. And we get again two times multiplied by this cross term, and we can simplify the factors two, and we will get to this expression for the energy of the singlet state. So we see here that the singlet state energy is related to the broken symmetry energy plus a cross term between the broken symmetry 1 and broken symmetry 2 wave functions, which we haven't calculated yet. For the triplet state, we can do the same. And the only difference will be that we have minus instead of plus in the uh, linear combination of broken symmetry states. So I will go slightly faster here. We will calculate the expectation value of the Hamiltonian in the, each of the broken symmetry solutions. And we have this cross term again. This is with the same color so that it is easier to track. And then we can carry out the 
uh, evaluation of the expectation value of the Hamiltonian and simplify again and we get to a very similar expression as before for the singlet. So here we have the expressions for the singlet and triplet energies as functions of the broken symmetry energy and this cross Hamiltonian term. So we will write the cross Hamiltonian term as a function of the triplet and broken symmetry energies. We are basically solving for the cross term from the triplet energy expression and we will use this light blue equation uh, later. The exchange coupling is defined as the difference between the singlet and triplet energies. So if we subtract these two expressions, we'll get that J equals ES minus ET and we can carry out the uh, subtraction between these fractions. Because the denominators of the fractions in blue and yellow are different, we have to do basically fraction summation and we have to multiply and divide each expression by the denominator of the other expression. So we have a common denominator for uh, both fractions. We get for the broken symmetry energy term this numerator that is the difference between the yellow and blue terms. And for the other part of the fraction, we get this other expression that is basically how the fractions containing the cross Hamiltonian term uh, are added up. So we also get this summation between the yellow and blue terms. In order to uh, tighten a little bit the equation, we multiply the yellow and blue terms in the denominator. So if you multiply one minus something and one plus something, you will get one minus that something squared. So this is the green term that is a mixture or a multiplication of the yellow and blue uh, terms. So we are carrying out the different expressions and we'll get to this expression for the exchange coupling that contains the overlap between the broken symmetry one and two states and this cross term multiplied by some minus two one plus two factors. And uh, we can carry out the, the summation of the fractions and we'll get to this term. And remembering the relation between the cross Hamiltonian term and these other expressions of the energy, we will replace this previous expression on the cross Hamiltonian term and we will get to this slightly longer expression. Again, containing the broken symmetry energy and now containing the triplet energy. If we carry out some algebra here, we can basically first distribute the broken symmetry and the triplet energies and then we collect those terms and we get the broken symmetry energy multiplied by this yellow term minus the tri triplet energy multiplied by the yellow term. Again, we can factor out the broken symmetry minus a triplet energies and because the green term was basically the product of the yellow and blue terms, we can now uh, cancel out the yellow term and we will get to this expression and this is almost our final expression. So this derivation was done uh, allowing for the possibility of an overlap between these broken symmetry calculations. This was a more general derivation. In most cases, because of how the calculations are done, this overlap between the different wave functions is zero. These solutions are orthogonal to each other. So we get to this simplified expression where the exchange coupling constant J is equal to two times the difference in energy between the broken symmetry and the triplet states. This definition came from using a Heisenberg Dirac van Fleck Hamiltonian that was written as minus J times spin operator one times spin operator two. But in many places, including Orca, a different convention is used that says that the Heisenberg Dirac van Fleck Hamiltonian has minus two J times S1 times S2. There are reasons for this, mostly historical, but if we use this different definition, basically we are using a different value for J, and from this definition, we get that J is equal to the difference in energy between the broken symmetry and triplet states. So basically, if the broken symmetry state is the ground state, J will be negative. So this is a very simple equation that uh, relates the exchange coupling constant that actually depends on the true singlet and triplet state wave functions with the broken symmetry solution that we can calculate from DFT. So if you do a DFT calculation where you first calculate the triplet energy 
and then from that you guess a broken symmetry solution in which basically you split the spin of one center and then you calcul calculate the energy of the broken symmetry solution you can easily calculate j so we will see an example on this on a copper dimer in a future video but if you don't want to wait the keywords for using this in orca are very simple you just include a term that says a self-consistent field broken sim one one end and of course you need to put the coordinates whatever charge your complex has and you have to start from the triplet pin multiplicity broken symmetry one one is referred to the number of electrons that you will have on each center so because you have a triplet you have two electrons one center will have one electron and the other another electron and one of these will be flipped so orca will decide how to do that in a future video we are going to see a work out example of this thank you very much